everyone, and thank you so much for listening today. I am beyond excited to have Dennis Yu with me on this podcast. This is an absolute honor to get to spend this time with him, learn from him, and I know that you guys are going to get so much value from what he shares. So welcome, Dennis. Thank you for being here today. Hey, Allie. How are you doing? Good to see you. I'm doing good. All right. So first off, for those who don't know Dennis, um, shame on you, but he is one of the most well-respected marketers that I have ever met and has such an amazing name, reputation, and track record for results, which is awesome. He also is really, really passionate about education um, with his company, Blitz Metrics. So I would love for you to just share a little bit about who you are, your kind of journey through marketing and what you're doing at the moment. I'm just a tech geek. I'm one of those Chinese kids that was good at math that found that internet marketing was a great place for math because engineers who can work with data have an advantage when it comes to building programs or buying keywords or optimizing Facebook ads. And I was very fortunate to be early at Yahoo and I built the analytics platform there. And that was 20 years ago. And that is amazing. Since then with you know, Facebook and Instagram and all these social networks, my view as an engineer is what does this mean from a data standpoint? What data is available and what can we do with it? And how do we drive results? So it's very different than what you might find a marketer or a small business owner's approach would be. And because I like to build systems with other engineers, we've been training up other people on how to use this data to be able to drive leads, drive sales, drive calls, understand the spooky you know, algorithm stuff. And we've built a lot of software and training programs that help young adults, stay-at-home moms, other people that want to be certified digital marketers be able to start working in a structured way, just like if you want to be a doctor, you go to med school. And we're very happy to partner with Social Media Examiner, Digital Marketer, Facebook, GoDaddy, and other folks to put our training out there. And for me, it's just an extension of teaching. I've always been a tutor. The last 30 plus years, I tutored people in math and accounting and things like that. And I see the same thing, especially with more recent events of bringing people online. Any way that we can teach from what we know that's based on a formula or a checklist, just like a, a recipe that other people can follow to be able to make your favorite food. That's what I want to put out there where we teach only from example and to get other people to be able to teach from example too. So Ali, you've done a lot in, in Facebook and Instagram for local. And those are checklists that other people can follow to get the same result, just like your favorite recipe for chocolate cake or chicken Parmesan or whatever it might be. And everyone who's listening, there's something that you know, otherwise you wouldn't have a business unless you can systematize that knowledge and you can put it into a checklist and you can help other people with that. And maybe you've not written these checklists down, maybe they're in your head. I love to see people get that down into a structured format that then they can give to other people and then see if they can do it. If three people can follow your checklist and end up with chocolate chip cookies or whatever your recipe is, then that's a good sign that your checklist is solid. And so we happen to have a lot of checklists in digital marketing, and we put most of it out there for free to young adults, to universities that are, are people that are getting going, like if you're a virtual assistant in the Philippines, and we'd love to see people be able to grow with digital marketing. We think it's a wide open market. I think you're totally right. And it is so important to do exactly what you said, really help other people see how this industry and how these systems and strategies can apply to them in their own life. And maybe they don't want to be this expert marketer speaking on Facebook and Instagram ads, but maybe they just want to be able to work from home and make an impact in somebody's life and, you know, yep. use these things that connect all of us um, to further their own professional career. So I think that's amazing. And going back to what you said on the checklist and that if three people can do it, that it's basically a valid system for use. That's mm -hmm. an amazing concept to think of. And I really look back at when I first started putting together a course or my group program, you know, before that, these were just things that were in my head, things that I did all the time, you know, to me internally, they were a system, yeah. but they were never put on paper. And, and there was no way for me to really effectively teach that to somebody. 
and just going through the process of having to break down your own knowledge mm. and write something that somebody else could mm. follow. It's a really interesting exercise because, mm -hmm. you know, you can use it to help other people, but it also makes you really analyze what it is that you're doing. Maybe figure out even a better way to do it as you're trying yeah. to put that together. So yeah. really, really cool thing to do, whether you're in marketing or not, obviously, you know, there's going to be a lot of local business owners listening to this. You have those same processes, just like Dennis said, start trying to put those into place so that you can hire more effectively so that you can mm -hmm. scale more effectively. And definitely mm -hmm. it's going to play into your marketing as well, because those are things that your audience is want to, they're going to want to know that about you. So yeah. what, what an amazing journey that you've had up until this point. Um, you obviously work with local businesses online businesses, really everything in between. But I do know that you love talking about local businesses and helping them really get better yeah. results when it comes to marketing. So yeah. obviously a lot of local businesses are already advertising and then a lot of them are not really confident to do that yet. What, what do you feel like is one of the most important things that you need to understand or that you need to do if you're a local mm -hmm. business before you start diving into the online marketing space? A lot of people, they're afraid of online marketing. And just like I remember, and you probably remember, Ali, in, in your days where your parents couldn't figure out how to use the VCR. It was this technical, challenging sort of thing, right? Or this TV in the background. How do you get this thing set up to be able to put other things? fire stick screen? for my parents. Or this camera <laughs> here, right? Or here, my buddy Dylan Collins, he's a social media expert, right? He puts videos out there, they get millions of views. Like some of your videos have gotten, what, 10, 20 million views? And he makes silly little videos. People like Dylan <clears throat> are the future of social media, right? I mean, who's doing a better job on TikTok and Snapchat? This guy here who's got millions of people following him or you and I, right? That guy. <laughs> so think about it from the standpoint of a local business. Local businesses are thinking, well, I don't understand how to do these, these funky dances. I don't understand how to use Facebook. I don't understand how to use, like we were talking about before, a Sony a7 IV camera and the different settings that you can use to be able to film. I don't know how to use any of this. So this whole thing with internet marketing and websites and email and social media tools and all this is so unfamiliar. So the first thing they need to know is that that's not what it is at all. That's what a lot of people think it is. When you realize that digital marketing driving sales for plumbers, doctors, restaurant owners, mechanics, personal injury attorneys, any kind of local business, products or services. When you understand that it's about connecting with people just through your stories, and we talked about three different levels of stories that you can tell, it can be as simple as saying, hey, um, this pink grapefruit seltzer is my favorite. In fact, I think it's as good as the Pellegrino one. It only costs 25 cents. There, I just shared a piece of knowledge. Did it in 15 seconds. Or I share, hey, did you know here on your iPhone, on the iPhone 11, you have these three different cameras and let me show you how you can stitch together to be able to record from the cameras on the front and the back. Or let me show you, for example, here's how I store all my photos. I have them here in Google Photos, I have them in Dropbox, and this is how I keep them synced. Or you tell another story. For example, a few months ago, I was the, at the Great Barrier Reef in Australia doing this lifelong bucket list thing. I wanted to go scuba diving. I got certified. I brought my iPhone with me underwater. I thought it was waterproof, and it shorted out two minutes later in the hot sea. <laughs> That's what happened to my husband when we were scuba diving the first right. time. It's a shame. So I'm just telling a story, and then, and then I can continue from that story and say, well, I tried to put the phone in a in a package of rice because that's what I read on the internet and it didn't work. Then I went to the Apple store and they replaced it because I had Apple care. Thank you so much for Apple care. But then, so I'm telling stories so I can identify, <coughs> excuse me, so other people can, can empathize. But then I share a piece of knowledge and I say, and you know, it was only minorly inconvenient because I had to stand in line at the Apple store. But you know what? 30 minutes later, I walked out with a brand new iPhone and all my photos and my email and my apps and all that were here. You know why? It's because I have everything backed up through Google, through iCloud, through Dropbox, and through Amazon. So I could take this phone and smash it and go into the Apple store, get another one, and everything's backed up. Are you doing that with your data? See? And then I might say, I also put together a guide on how I do that, how I operate my life 
on my phone because I travel five million. Well, I've traveled five million miles, three hundred thousand miles a year. And let me show you how I operate with life on the road. You know, going to conferences, this kind of thing. And what I've done is I've just told you three stories. I've gone from why to how to what. The why, some kind of moment, some lightweight thing that happened. I got cut off in the parking lot at Whole Foods, or somebody yelled at me, or I was frustrated, or I woke up and I didn't have enough sleep because I was tired. I'm just telling you some quick little story. Then, which is from that story, I share some piece of knowledge that you can gain from this. And then the what is I make some kind of offer. It can be give me your email address or call this phone number. Or if things are locked down, I could say, you know, we're still open for business. You can still call me. We're still, we'll still deliver your food. We'll still, you know, call my friend, Dr. David Berg runs a chain of hospitals. And with the coronavirus thing going on, he wants to shift everything to telemedicine because his facilities are full right now. You can imagine, right? Mm -hmm. So he has people coming through and, and calling and, and the nurse practitioners are answering phone calls saying, do you have a fever? Are you coughing? Have you, have you traveled outside of, you know, to these different places? Have you, and thus it, it's a way of shifting the business. So when we understand it's about why, how, and what, then it's not about technology. It's not about WordPress and click funnels and all this other stuff. And a lot of people, you see, you know, a lot of people think, Small business owners think it's about tools and technology and programming. Nothing could be further from the truth. What matters is being able to tell stories in these three sequences. And thus, the most important tool is this one right here. You have all the experience. I can't tell you how many times I've talked to a small business owner and they've said, yeah, I've gone through three different marketing agencies and consultants. And they each time they promise all this stuff. And then they took all my money. They didn't do anything. I paid $10,000 for that website. And I'm not getting any more business as far as I can tell. I hired a social media consultant and they post for me five times per day on Twitter and LinkedIn and whatever, but I really don't see how that's driving me any business though. Or maybe I just don't understand it because I don't understand social media, but I, I just want to get more patience. I just want to drive more sales. I just want to make the phone ring more. So what do I need to do? Because then they explain to me all the software I need to buy. I don't understand any of this software. It's very, very confusing for people in exactly the way that you described. And I've heard those same exact stories. And, and what they are missing, like you said, is the fundamental understanding of what actually will help them grow their business. And yeah. it's relationships with those people in your community facilitated through telling your stories and sharing your message yeah. and making sure that they really understand not only what your business name is not only what your name is but your mission to help people in whatever mm -hmm. way that is yeah. so i think that putting it in those simple terms is so important because you know the first question i ask you is what should someone start doing when they first get involved and you didn't talk about the tools and the technologies and all of these things you talked about a really simple but effective concept of sharing your story doing it quickly and, and when you think about something like that, it doesn't matter which platform it's on at the right. end of the day. Exactly. It matters that it's, it's reaching those right people that they are connecting with your business and that you make them an offer because that's the last step. Mm -hmm. Actually making someone an offer and letting them understand how they can work with you. And I think that that's something that a lot of business owners really, they miss because they think that everyone understands exactly what it is that they do. And they just don't. There may be things about your business that no one knows but you, and you're you're just assuming that they have this clarity that you as the business owner have in terms of your services. Yeah. So the same way that your friend with the hospitals, he's shifting his offer to telemedicine That's instead right. of his traditional um, bricks and mortar medical practice or hospital. Yeah. So a, a lot of businesses, maybe they're not even considering that as a real effective offer that people want and need. If people are confined to their homes, which is the case, you know, at the time of this recording, yeah. um, they need somewhere they don't have to go. So if you don't share that with them directly and let them know, hey, this is something we're doing now that we haven't done in the past and we're doing it because you need it, they're not just automatically going to assume that you've shifted in that way. That's right. So I think it's just a really powerful point, not only of 
um, making sure that the connection is built, but making sure that you do intentionally tell people how they can work with you, which yeah. can, can feel a little bit uh, weird or uncomfortable to yeah. some, but it's, it's part of running your business. If you were doing it offline, if you were at a networking party, you know, you would tell people who you are and what you do and obviously yeah. show an interest in them and really focus on trying to connect with them. Um, but you would explain what it is you're trying to get out there into the world. So if you would do that with someone in person that you were trying to connect with, um, you should absolutely do those things online as well. So really, really good info there. I, uh, like I was yeah. mentioning before your video strategy with these three 15 second videos at three different levels, um, you know, the why, the how, and the what. Yep. These are really achievable for local business owners because they're not complex, high production value videos. That's they right. allow someone who has never been comfortable on camera or done video in the past to ease into this in mm -hmm. a very simplistic way, but the most effective way based right. on what you've seen. So I see that as a huge win. And I think that's something that the audience is going to be able to take and hopefully mm -hmm. implement right away so that you can see some, some yeah. much better results. So you are a big data person. When someone is looking at their advertising <coughs> a lot of times, they're very confused as to what the data even says. Mm -hmm. How do I even know if my ads are working? You know, yeah. local businesses, yeah. like you said, they just want to see yeah. those sales. But how do you tie that online marketing to the offline and use the data mm -hmm. to get you the answers? Yeah, it's kind of funny because you have a lot of non-data people asking me data questions. And then you have people, like you just said, calling me a big data person. I think I'm a, I'm a big data person <laughs> or I could be a big data person, but I think I'm becoming more of a big data person. And what I've realized is that <clears throat> no amount of charts and tools and reports and pie charts and donut charts and, you know, line graphs ever substitute for understanding what it is that you're looking for. And when we have tools like Google analytics, that's not Google analytics, that's Google chart maker. That's Google report generator. There's almost no analytics out there. <clears throat> and you know how you can tell when there's an absence of analytics is when people are focusing so much on the tools. <clears throat> we see big companies do this. Nike paid us over a million dollars to build some analytics for them. But they didn't want to do any analysis. They just wanted these beautiful charts. <laughs> and we find that most people spend all this time trying to generate charts and look at all the potential reports that you could make. But let's go back to the very simple thing of what's your business goal, right? I need to drive, and, and most businesses, they don't have this. So let's say I'm, I'm a chiropractor and I want to drive leads. And I know that when I meet with somebody on the phone or in person that 70% of the time they become patient and the average revenue might be $1,500. Well, then how much can I afford to pay for that lead, for that phone call? Is it $10? Is it $78? Is it $32? If I don't know what that number needs to be, does it matter what my cost per click is in Facebook ads? Does it matter what, how long people stay on the website? Does it matter what my you know, average hold time is? Does it matter how well a certain keywords are performing? Does it matter the quality score or relevance score yeah, in a Google ad? Does it matter how many emails I sent out in the open rates? Does it matter, does anything matter? If I don't know that initial metric, that business metric. So I need, so to know, right. I need to know that business metric first. <clears throat> and just to harken back to the previous conversation we had, you can't hire a consultant or website builder or social media agency, whatever, <clears throat> to make your content for you because it's your story. It's your face on the cell phone. Nobody is going to be your face. I mean, maybe they got deep fakes going on right now. By the time you see this video or whatever, people, you can put like Tom Cruise's face on mine and have Tom Cruise, whatever, right? But people buy from people. And all of us as small business owners, we understand that, especially in local. So if we know that's the case, in, in terms of the thing that's holding you back from being a successful business owner and driving more leads is just you being afraid to get your face out there because you don't like how you look. 
let's think about the analysis side of things. <clears throat> Most people, they're so afraid of the data and the tools and whatnot that they don't realize that that business goal, just like the content, has to be determined by them because you're the one setting your price and you know when people come talk to you, what percent become clients. You just generally know, right? You don't, uh, one of my mentors who was the CEO of American Airlines, he told me, because I, I never saw him pull out a notebook and calculate and do this kind of stuff. And I said, Al, why, why is that? I mean, on an airline, you got to know exactly what the loads are and the revenue and, you know, revenue management capacity planning and all these sorts of things. And he said to me, you know, if a deal, and this is like in terms of acquiring other companies or major projects saying yes or no to, he said, if it's too close that you have to calculate it, then it's not a deal worth doing. It should be so obvious that it's like, yes, this is a no brainer. And I think that's the same thing in marketing. A lot of people are trying to go to this precision that is unnecessary. I see agencies that we coach send me reports, <coughs> client reports like, oh, this client last month spent $2,532.98 and they drove this many clicks and they had, you know, 1,000, uh, you know, 1.7 million, blah, blah, blah impressions all the way down to the decimal point. They're calculating CTR and all this. And I said, you don't need any of that, do you? Can you just tell me what the key numbers are? And any, anytime you see lots and lots and lots of charts and numbers in a thick report that someone sends you, it usually means that they're covering for the fact that there's no analysis. It's like the, you know, the, the small man in the big truck, right? Mm -hmm. And so analysis is this simple. What is your key business metric? And when I mean a business metric, I mean your cost per lead, your ROAS, how much in sales you need to drive per month, like an actual business metric that a real human, like a CFO or whoever would care about. And then I can look at secondary, which are called troubleshooting or derived metrics open rate, CPC, CTR, cost per lead, all that kind of stuff. But that's really what has to happen. And this thing, this simple rule I tell you about, look at the business metric first, that will solve 95% of the issues that business owners and large, even large marketing organizations have with their data. Now in that remaining 5%, that's when you're doing A-B testing, that's when you're looking at statistical significance, you're looking at attribution, you're looking at all that kind of stuff that you know, you and I, we speak on stage about, but if I were a practical small business owner, I would start with that business metric. And the majority of business owners, they may sort of know like how much money they made last month. They may sort of know what their costs are. They may sort of know how much they spent, but Ali, how many times have you sat down with a business owner and you say, all right, tell me what your numbers are. And they say, I, I don't really know. I'd have to go look that up or I'd have to go look at, okay, well, this conversation can't start unless you know what your numbers are. Okay. Otherwise Basically we're just every time <laughs> we're hypothesizing, right? Yeah. We're, we're not here to, so if you come into the emergency room, right? And let's say you're sick for something where I'm not going to hypothesize over what we might do. I'm going to take your blood. I'm going to get an x-ray. I'm going to get all this, all the vitals I'm going to collect from you. I don't want to just look at your face and speculate whether I think you might have a fever or not. I'm going to actually take your temperature. Right. And then when I have all the vitals, then what am I going to do? I'm going to diagnose. I'm going to analyze it. So the analysis is what happens from the data. You cannot do analysis when there is no data, unless you're a witch doctor or something like that. Right. And then the third step is, is the treatment plan. Based on this diagnosis, we're going to do this kind of surgery. You're going to buy these kinds of pills. You're going to stay in the hospital this many days. You're going to do all these different things. But I'd ask you, Allie, and then everyone else, listening. How many times do you see, see somebody make a prescription before diagnosis, before collecting data? Sometimes I see it, unfortunately, but it should be the, like the minority of the time um, and only, you know, be done in the correct order, essentially. Yeah. You cannot give everyone the same prescription. You cannot give everyone the same surgery. It needs to be what's right for what's going on with their body. And so we exactly. say pres prescription before diagnosis is malpractice. And thus, I believe the majority of digital marketing consultants are malpractice. I think you're absolutely right. And it's, you know, it's funny you use that analogy because my husband has been dealing with, you know, some type of allergy related issue for almost a year now. And sadly, he's been to the doctor so many times and they've never run a single test. I have... Yeah. 
you know, I've told him, how are you, how are you even getting an accurate uh, answer? Why are, yeah, it's pure speculation. And guess what? He's still in the same position today that he was then for that exact reason. Yeah. Because they don't honestly know based on real fact what's going on. So I think mm. that that's a really amazing analogy to use. And it's so true. Um, I, I hear not only business owners, but also other marketers asking some of those same questions that yeah. they shouldn't be asking yet. You know, what's a good cost yeah. per lead for this industry? Well, okay. What's a good cost per lead for this business based on their conversion rates and their right. costs and how much their right. customers are worth to them? It's not an industry standard because it's not going to work for everyone the same way. Right. right. And, you know, really trying to understand again, that it's not about some of those fancy metrics. It comes down to only a handful of things that you can absolutely find if you're looking for them, but you need to be basing all of your marketing decisions on whether or not you're achieving those goals. Yeah. You know, if you've got a, super high conversion rate for the leads that come in, you're in a great position to be able to spend more per lead if you had to, because you know that you're going to be turning more of those into paying clients. Obviously that's not the goal, but that will change some of those decisions that you make in terms of, is this still a profitable campaign for me? Yeah. So it's, it really is critical. Um, and I cannot stress enough just the same way that you would, that these are the numbers that will tell you what's happening, not only in your mm -hmm. business, but in your marketing and yeah. without them, you will be just walking blind through all of this, never mm -hmm. understanding what your actual results are. Wasting money. Exactly. And I think that it, it goes back to the fact of, okay, what is your actual return on investment? Because mm -hmm. most local business owners, they are not selling direct online. It has to happen offline in an appointment on the phone. Something has to occur that's not happening on the Facebook and Instagram ad platform. And you've got to be able to track those things too. You have to be able to tie what happens after a lead's coming in where they're going, how long it's taking them, which ads are actually producing the paying mm -hmm. customers, not just the leads. That's right. So that, you know, if you're working with an agency or a marketer and they give you that stack of data that you were talking about, all you really should be asking is how much return on investment did we make? What was our return mm -hmm. on ad spend? If you have a long, longer buying cycle, it may not be something that you can calculate on a monthly basis, but you should know how many leads were produced and where they are in that buying process, mm -hmm. how many have ascended to the next step. And then you're going to know what the odds are of those people closing, which is going to give you a great idea in terms of what your monthly return is going to look like. So that's all that matters at the end of the day. And if you are getting a great return on investment, yeah. And you know it based on mm -hmm. fact, you're going to be excited to spend more yeah. on your marketing, yeah. not scared because you have that confidence that you yeah. know you're getting more out of it than you're putting into it, which I think would change yeah. the mindset of a lot of local business owners when it comes to their marketing. Absolutely. Imagine it's, that. Uh, Imagine I know. Marketing or social media marketing being boiled down to this simple fact. Find the thing that is working in your business and then try to amplify that. Among all the things that are happening, can you isolate the thing that's really working for you? And I would ask that question for every business owner. If they can't answer that question, then they're doing all the stuff that you just mentioned. They're just wandering around in the dark trying random things. I think you're absolutely right. And that also kind of goes into creating your offer, what you just said, what you're doing right. You need to amplify mm -hmm. that. You know, mm -hmm. work with what you've got. If people love it, find a way to get it out to more people. Don't try and, you know, change to something that somebody else suggests that isn't yeah. going to work for your specific business. Mm -hmm. So I think that, you know, if, if local businesses would do that, um, we would all be in a much better place. You'd be happier, you'd be more knowledgeable, and you really would be able to identify if you're not getting a good return, what you yeah. can do to change it. Yeah. And if you are getting a good return, you can stop stressing about it for a little bit and, and enjoy what's working for you. So hmm. yeah, just really great tips. Um, if you could share 
something with local business owners in terms of where they could best spend their time moving forward, um, whether it be on planning, uh, whether it be on trying to learn some of the technology, or maybe it's trying to hire people that can mm -hmm. do it for them. In your experience, mm -hmm. what do you feel like would be the best use of their time to get the most out of their money? I would always start with being able to tell the story of who you are as a local business owner. And there's many different ways that we talked about that through the why, how, and what, to the X, Y, Z method, through the funnel, through you know cell phone videos, like whatever it is, you've got to be able to capture that content because that's the one thing that drives the architecture of your business. It's why people buy. Even if you don't want to be a figurehead, even if you're not trying to become Gary Vaynerchuk or Tony Robbins, but you still need to to collect those stories and organize them. That's the one thing that nobody else can do for you, no matter how much money you pay some consultant. This is the thing that still has to come from you as a local business owner. Even if you got other people that are prettier or can speak on camera, people can see through that, right? They, they buy because of you, because you started your business, you have the expertise, no one else can really fake that or replace you. So if you start from there, and let's say you already have that, then you can move into distribution. Distribution is, put it on the website or on Twitter or use this email program or use this other kind of tool that puts stuff on LinkedIn and lets you go live like StreamYard, you know, live streaming or all these different places to distribute. But you've got to get the stories and the content together, the fuel and the, if you will, the, the water or whatever, the fluid, and then you can move it to the plumbing, which is all the different places you can put stuff. Most people, they're so focused on the medium the, the, the plumbing, the, you know, Snapchats, where you need to be in TikTok. You need to every drop whatever you're doing and get on TikTok. Okay, what am I going to say? What's my content? Well, just do stupid dancing sorts of things because you can get millions of views. And how does that tie to my business? How, does, how is my business making money off of this? Well, teenagers are here and they're going to eventually buy from you. Okay, until there's a clear proof of somebody making money, not as an influencer, but as a I am not going to waste time on nonsense like that. Okay. And I'm a social media person. I'm, I'm a tools person. I'm an engineer. I build tools. I'm, and as a tools person, me telling you that you, that the tools are the last thing you need to do. You should listen to me because I can see through the nonsense that other people are giving you. Oh, if you just use this tool, nonsense. Right. And then the third piece is scaling and hiring other people and delegating and bringing on an agency and hiring virtual assistants from the Philippines, having software that does automation. Well, you're only going to get to that third phase of automation if you have the content already. It's working well in the distribution channel based on the analytics. You can see how many sales and leads and whatever these techniques are driving. And then you can move to automation and hiring other people. How, how successful do you think you'd be, Ali, if you just started hiring all these people because maybe you saw that, that we have hundreds of Filipinos that we've hired and they make anywhere from $3 an hour to say like 12 bucks an hour doing video editing, building websites, doing all these different kinds of things. So you're like, you know what? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do that too. But you don't have a clear process to manage them. You don't have a bunch of channels that are working and the associated processes and you don't have that clear framework of the content and the messaging, the fuel that goes through the plumbing that then gets amplified out the other side. What would happen if you just started hiring all these people? And let's say they were good people. What would happen? You, you would have mass confusion on your hands. You would waste an expon exponential amount of time trying to explain yourself, share these things individually. Um, the people that you hire, despite how great they are, they're not going to perform at their best because right. you're not ready for them. That's you know? right. So and you'd it's fail. not going to be a benefit. So when, when, and then when you fail, you're going to say, well, I tried Dennis's system and it didn't work. So it's a scam, right? <laughs> or Absolutely. I went to the gym and I worked out really hard for three hours. And then I checked mirror. I don't have six pack abs yet. So this whole workout program is a scam, right? I tried Facebook ads and it didn't work. Oh, really? <laughs> well, wait a minute. Did you, did, did you skip all these other steps and go straight to running Facebook ads? Cause somebody mm -hmm. told you that you need to run Facebook ads. See, this is the problem with local business and small business. It's not that they are, you know, bad people. 
And it's not that the consultants they hire are necessarily bad. It's that they don't follow the recipe. You need to have the content, then you can distribute it, and then you can do all the tools and automation and all that really sexy, oh, look over there, squirrel, you know, the shiny red object stuff. And Absolutely. It's That's stuff like that. It's, it's exactly what you said. I think that they, part of the reason that they get so distracted with all these different tools and programs or even let it overwhelm them is because part of them isn't willing to do the real work that it takes to lay that foundation. And so they feel like they're getting somewhere by doing this and doing that, but they, they really are only taking themselves away from the time that they should be spent doing yeah. those maybe less yeah. sexy things first. And I think that's what it comes down to sometimes, yeah. do the work that you have yeah. to do, um, not the, the new novel fun thing to do, yeah. um, but it really will help them get exactly where they need to go if they would just follow the recipe exactly like you said, and also take personal responsibility yeah. for the results of what you're doing. Like you said, you can't yeah. go to the gym for three hours, blame it on the gym. You have to say, right. I didn't give it enough time. I didn't give it the proper strategy. I didn't right. have the right technique. And I'm right. going to work really hard to do those things That's right. before I make any type of you know evaluation on how this is going to work. Yeah. So, I think that that is just an amazing piece of information and it comes down to really just internal thinking and mindset, but it really will help push someone in the right direction instead of keeping them in this endless cycle of non-results and confusion. So, oh my gosh, this has just been an amazing episode. I mean, you are a wealth of information. Where can people learn more about you and more about Bliss Metrics and how they could work with you potentially? Look for me on LinkedIn. I always reply. You can send me an email, Dennis at blitzmetrics.com. I always reply. It might take me a couple of days because I have 800 emails a day that I go through. Or just look up any topic that you want related to Facebook marketing or digital ads and whatever. You'll see a ton of the content that I have out there. Right? Absolutely. I'm happy to help. Like reach out to me on any social network except for Facebook. <laughs> I'm at the 5,000 friend. You know, you only have 5,000 as the limit, right? And I've been at mm -hmm. that for like 10 years. There's, there's no more room. I wish I could be friends, but now it's only people that I know in person, right? Yep. Hey, you got to make decisions sometimes. Yeah. Anyway, Dennis, thank you so much for sharing all this amazing wisdom with my listeners. I truly appreciate it. And if you guys do have any questions about what we've gone over today, reach out to Dennis, reach out to me. We would love to clarify it for you. We really just want to make sure that you can succeed yep. in the local business uh, game and really get where you need to go based on the great things I'm sure you already have in place. So thanks again. And I look forward to sharing more on our next episode. Thanks so Pleasure, much. Allie. 